there's something about being in another country that really makes you reconsider your relationship with language. Maybe it's being forced to recognize that, especially as a white, monolingual American, your grasp of the depth and capabilities of human speech is severely lacking. Or maybe it's just that you spend most of your time being really f***ing confused. If I'm being completely honest, I've never been much good at languages, other than English. Although I'm sure there are probably a lot of people out there who would say I'm not very good at that either. So spending a whole week in Mexico staying in a place that's entirely owned and operated by Spanish-speaking people, I essentially spent an entire week making a lot of exaggerated facial expressions and waving my arms around and generally trying not to make an ass of myself. But I can pretty much guarantee that if the appropriate response wasn't some version of hola, buenos dias, or cerveza, I did make an ass of myself. But more than that, I got to spend the week thinking about how to get by without it, how to live without language. So on top of repeatedly putting my foot in my mouth, I spent the week rereading one of my favorite books of short stories, No One Belongs Here More Than You by Miranda July. Miranda July is someone whose entire career has been marked by paying way too much attention to things that most people never even see. And this book is no exception. I mean, these stories are small, not short, but like, small. Like, try and explain the plot of any of them to someone and they'll be like, uh... A woman holds her neighbor while he has a seizure. Uh... A recent college grad teaches some old people how to swim on her living room floor. Uh... They sound like nonsense, but what they really are are moments, tiny snapshots that July sits down in and pulls apart feeling by feeling with a level of patience and care that very few people would give to something seemingly so inconsequential. And she is also someone who's thought way too much about language, as evidenced by the fact that I'm pretty sure there's not a single quotation mark in this entire book. All the dialogue just exists. It just is. No more special or important than the narration. And honestly, it's a little jarring at first. But with every story you read, not only do you start to get more used to it, you start to see the world the way Miranda July does, or at least seems to in this book. It's really, what's the difference between dialogue and narration, between the words in our heads and the words in our mouths? The way someone says hello and the way they lean their head forward slightly when they do, it makes all the words start to feel like gestures. No difference between what we're meant to see and what we're meant to hear. And then I was sitting on a beach in Mexico trying to order a drink from someone who barely spoke English and I barely spoke Spanish and I'm having all these feelings of guilt and confusion and whatnot and trying to figure out how to stop it. And then I realized I'm putting way too much emphasis on dialogue. Sure, I couldn't understand what he was saying. He probably couldn't understand what I was saying, but that doesn't mean we can't understand each other. Language may be regional, but body language is almost universal. It's the first communication humans had, and we still use it so much, a lot more than we realize. Yet in our writing, it's easy to think, want two characters to interact? Put it in dialogue. And yes, dialogue is important. We like words, we're writers. But often what's being said isn't nearly as important as the way it's being said, or the person's posture as they say it, or how quickly they leave to avoid saying more. Try this. Next time you're in a conversation with someone, pay attention to the ways they're communicating without language. Are they leaning in? Looking away? Where are their eyes? Their hands? It'll often tell you way more than their words will. Next time you're writing someone, try to do the same. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Left to Right. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know down in the comments. How do you communicate without language? How do you write without dialogue? Have you ever made a fool of yourself in another country? Let me know. I'd love to talk about it.